Okay. All right, once again, you are all welcome. And uh, my name is Adewusi Michael Adelani. And for some weeks to come, I'll be taking us on the uh, practical statistics, uh, which I tied to practical statistics with Adelani. Uh, this is just my, uh, a kind of giving back to the society so that people could learn from what and what I have and uh, what and what I can give also. So right away, we are starting off with uh, the T-test, as you can see, the T-test. Well, let me tell us a brief thing about the T-test. There was a man named Goset. He's a brewer. That is, he works with uh, he works with uh, uh, Nigerian uh, Guinness. He works with Guinness. So, and he was the one that actually invented this uh, statistical tool. He came across it when he said uh, he wanted to know some uh, difference between some certain stage or mean set of things, and he came with the with the idea and with the invention. And actually he published the paper on uh, T-test. And what do we use T-test for? We use T-test just to see the difference between just two, only two variables. So if you have more than one variables, that means you can't use T-test. You can't use T-test if you have more than two variables. So you can only use T-test for two variables. So anything more than two variables, you can't use the test for it. There are several other statistical tools, which we will also go into that you can use five variables, 10 variables, even though if you have 100 variables. So that was just by the joke, but you can only use the test for uh, just two variables. And before you can use the test, there are some assumptions that you must meet. We are not allowed to use the test until we meet these three assumptions. You know, we talk about parametric statistics. And when you talk about parametric statistics, you have parametric and you have non-parametric. And the test is one of the parametric. Parametric, it is says that there are some assumptions that you must meet. If you don't meet those assumptions, there are other statistical or non-parametric statistical tools which you can use. We are still going to treat all of them, both parametric and non-parametric. And these are just the three assumptions that you must fulfill. One of them is the normality of population. When you talk about normality of population, you talk about the population that is normal. That is, you want to find the difference between uh, a, a, a phenomenon that is happening within a population. You can't say you want to find what is happening between SS1, then the same thing you want to find in SS3. Those populations are not normal. So your populations has to be normal. And when we talk about homogeneity, that is, they, they, they have the same uh, occurrences. They have the same things in common. And when you talk about random, random means you say, okay, you number one, you number two, you number one, you number two, you number one, you number two, and you now group them together. So if these three assumptions are not meant, you cannot perform the test. However, there is something that we call robustness of t-test. Robustness in the sense that it permits us to go ahead if you miss some of these assumptions. That's what we mean by robustness of a t-test. But you hear some people say, ah, I want to use a robust statistics. A robust statistics is as if it's something that is big. No, when you talk about robustness, you talk about, you say, oh, you, want, you, you are permitted to go ahead. You know, all these three things, they are like police. 
that like uh, saying, oh, there are things that you must fulfill before you can have this. Before you can become a professor, there are things, there are levels of uh, paper that you must have published, uh, articles you must have published, uh, books you must have written, and some level of experience that you must have before you can become a professor. You know, those are assumptions that you must meet. And these are the three that you must meet before you perform a T-test. Now, what is the procedure for testing for normality of proportion or population and also for testing for homogeneity of variance? What you can see there, the first thing you need to do is you need to load your data in IBM SPSS. You know, you hear people saying SPSS, SPSS, that is wrong. That is wrong. It's just as if you are saying, uh, Adewusi, Adewusi, Adewusi. Adewusi is my surname, but my real name is, you call it fool. It's just the way you have the IBM SPSS, you know? IBM International Corporation, they bought over SPSS. So the right name for it to be called is IBM SPSS. Then you follow the procedure as follow. In the statistics, which I'm going to demonstrate to us very soon, you click on analyze, you click on descriptive statistics, then you click on explore. After that, you load your relevant options and you click OK. And within seconds, you will see that it will now indicate for you if your uh, data set is normal and if they are also of homo they are also homogeneity. So that is the procedure for you to follow before you can fulfill or verify those two assumptions. And when you get there, once the results are being displayed, there are these uh, two, uh, two tests which will be displayed that must not be significant. You know, when you say your result is normal of population, will mean that either of the following two normality tests, there are several, there are other normality tests, but these are the ones that are much more general, which is the Kulmong, Gurov, Smenov, K, K, which is also called KS test, and also Shapiro wheel test. Once you see that your data is not significant, then it means that you are good to go. And it also means that your data sets are of normal population. Note at the lower down there that I said, not being significant means that the population is not significantly different from normal, that is from one another. So the two uh, populations you are trying to test, it shows not significant. And what does that mean? It means that the population is not significantly different from one another. That is, you know, one and three, they are not significantly different from one another. And also, you cannot tell me that two and five, whereas you have a, in a place two and three. So the two and five, is much more larger, while the two and three, they are somehow normal. So that is what I mean by that. And when you say something is not significant, then the value should be more than zero, I mean, point is zero five. And what do I mean by zero five? In statistics, especially in academics, we, we normally say uh, is zero, 0 0.05 significant uh, is difference. What it means is this, that I am very sure if you convert that to percentage, that is just 5%. That means it means that you can play away, you can go away with 5%, but you are very, very sure that what you are getting in terms of percentage, it is you have an assurance of 95%. That is what it means. So let's go ahead. Then also, for you to know your homogeneity of variance, which is what we call the Levin test, 
that also should not be significant. What do I mean by not being significant? It means that the variances of the two groups are homogeneous, that is not significantly different. The variances that you have in the two groups, group A and group B, must be what? Be homogeneous. That is, it means not significantly different from one another. So your Levin test should not be significant. Your Shapiro weak test should not be significant. Once you are able to pass through those two, which means your, your data is normal, then your data has is of homogeneity of uh, variance. Now, when we say, I said this earlier about the robustness of T-test, when we say T-test is very kind, allowing us to violate two of his assumptions, that gives room for robot, uh, robustness. And also, let's consider this uh, no hypothesis. You know, when you have the no hypothesis, hypothesis, you have your age and your small letter uh, O down lower here. You know, you see some people at times they will write age and they will write O at the upper. That is wrong. So this is H O one. Now let's consider this hypothesis. It is a no hypothesis, which says that there will be no, you can see, there will be no statistically significant difference. Statistically significant difference. Why are we using statistically? It is because we are using a statistical tool. That is why you have this uh, statistically significant difference between students of, you can say of primary six, primary five, I mean, or of, you know, they, you, have to, you have to be mindful of your homogeneity and also be mindful of your normality of population. So I'm going to put here a uh, significant difference between students of uh, art class and students of chemistry, I mean, sorry, art class and commercial class in performance. You know, where you have empty space here, you'll see art, art class and student of the uh, science class in performance in total score in week one. So this is a no, an example of a no hypothesis. And because you only have two variables, and what are the two variables? You have the art class, and you also have the science class. So the both of them, they are in SS2. So that is your population, the SS2. But you are not picking from your sample. Now, your sample of an art class and also the science class. We are now trying to say that there is no statistically significant difference among in their performance in the total score. And from here, you can see that this guy here is your the total score which the two of them are having and you will state at the back down down you will say confidence level or AFAC level of is equal to 0 0.05 now how do you after fulfilling all your assumptions the next stage now is how now do you perform the test test procedure using the IBM SPSS. It's super simple. There is no magic in it. There is no uh, cramming in it. Once you continue to do and do and do and do, you continue to do and do and do, you get used to it. But the foundation is you have two variables and you want to perform, maybe you want to see their statistical difference or anything. You use the test because there are two variables. By the time we go deeper, you begin to see we have three variables, you have four variables and all of them. Which statistical do you need to use? We'll get to that. But how do you use this t-test now? It's very simple. Once you open up your, uh, your IBM SPSS, any version, you go to analyze, you click on compare mean, you click on independent, 
then you select independent sample t test. Then you insert your test variable and group variable. Then you click OK. Within seconds, the magic is done. So you see your result coming up. Now, there are five simple tests, I mean, sorry, steps that you need to know when you want to uh, perform this or where you want to state your problem, I mean, state your uh, conclusions and all of them. But now you see several articles. I've read like close to five articles today. And I saw the way they presented their, their results. And I was just shaking my head. I said, wow, people can still publish things like this. So it's, it's, uh, it has to do with their knowledge of understanding. So the step one is you need to state your research question. You know from your research questions, you will get to your hypothesis and set the confidence level at which to test it. You know, when you say confidence level, you can have any confidence level, but however, the general accepted ones is zero point, I mean point is zero five and point is zero one. Then you conduct the t-test. And then after conducting the t-test, after conducting your after conducting your t-test, you present your t-test table. After which, then you state your decision on the hypothesis. So all decisions must be stated on hypothesis. So you, you don't need to now begin to state things on your research question. No, it is your hypothesis that you state your decision on, either to reject or to not to reject. You can say, I didn't say accept. So don't say you accept any hypothesis. It is wrong. It is generally accepted that you say you do not reject or you do not, uh, or, or you, you, you do not reject or you reject. Do not reject or you reject it. So that is what you will state for your uh, hypothesis. And also, Let's go for that before we get to the practical. And when you are stating your decision, you can see what I have here. You will state your finding. You will state your decision. You will state your decision. And then you will now state under your decision if you reject it or you do not reject it. That is what you give at your decision. Now, you can see this kind of a shorthand which I have here. By the time we get into the practical proper, you will see uh, why I wrote this and why you must write this. You know, in some papers, they will say, uh, when table T is this and when table that is that, they, you have to accept, you have to, no, 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 no. This is a shorthand that we use now. Uh, when you want to state your findings in the in what you've gotten. Let's proceed further. I think that is the end of uh, that is the end of that now. The present things that we need to do now is to go to the practical. Just give me some minutes. Let me load my SPSS and we'll go into the practical. Hello, I have a question, sir. Hello, sir. Hello, ma. I'm with you, ma. I have a question, sir. All right, no problem. Um. Okay, sir. 
I'm looking at the way you stated the hypothesis, the example you gave us now. Yeah. You said there will be no statistically significant difference between stand, um, blah, 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 blah. Yeah. But usually, the way we usually state it is there is no statistic, uh, statistical, statistical difference between, that's how we usually state it. So now, I'm when seeing you say, that you are stating that. Yeah, why you say between? That word, that English between, you know, between is just between two things. No, Hello? I'm talking about there will be no, it's a kind of projection that there will be no statistical difference or there is no, we usually state it as there is no statistical difference. And they are the same. There will be no, or there, there is no, they are, diff, they are the same. But when you say okay. between. Okay. But the moment you say between, between it can only work, that is English coming in now. So that can only work okay. between just two things. You get the analogy okay. now. Yeah. Yes, okay. So let me let me just load my SPSS now. <laughs> 